Thanks for joining me for another Across the Pond episode of Lights Out, your virtual campfire. I'm your hostess with the mostest ghosties, Sylvia Schultz. One of the jewels of London, a place filled with delights, is the Victoria and Albert Museum. It's one of the largest museums in the world. Its 145 galleries hold a staggering four and a half million objects, all considered to be part of the permanent collection. And two of those objects are haunted. Which two? Well, let's find out and go lights out. In the British galleries in room 118A sits a haunted chair. The chair, upholstered in emerald green brocade, is said to be haunted by the ghost of Eva Marie Weigel, the wife of actor David Garrick. Eva died in 1822, but apparently remains attached to the chair. I don't blame her, it's really pretty. The cushion features a brocade flower spread across the seat. The cushion is usually nice and plump. The stuff seems to have held up well over the centuries. But several times a day, the cushion sinks as if someone is sitting on it. The brocade flower in the middle of the cushion even folds in on itself under the invisible weight. On my visit to the museum, I was able to do a bit of recording in room 118A and have a little chat with the enchanting Mrs. Garrick. Mrs. Garrick, I have come all the way from America to see your favorite chair. And I can understand why it was your favorite. This is so beautiful. And I know you like to sit in it every once in a while. So, I would be very grateful if you could come and sit on the chair so that I know that you're here. I understand it kind of sinks under your weight, insubstantial as that may be. My name is Sylvia, and I would be ever so pleased to make your acquaintance. Can you tell me your name, please? I know you as Mrs. Garrick, but I would be very pleased and honored if you would tell me your name in your voice. absolutely mean the world to me if I could see you take a seat on your chair that's someone else in the gallery while I'm waiting for Mrs. Garrick to take a seat I'll read a little bit about this Mr. and Mrs. Garrick, a fashionable couple. David Garrick, the famous actor, theater manager, and playwright, was socially ambitious and enjoyed fashionable life. After he married the Viennese dancer, Eva Marie Weigel, in 1754, they acquired a country villa at Hampton on the Thames. From 1765, it was improved by the architect Robert Adam and furnished by the cabinet maker Thomas Chippendale. Chippendale hung several rooms with Chinese wallpaper and supplied painted furniture to match. In 1772, the Garricks bought a London house in Adam's new speculative development, the Adelphi, just off the Strand. Chippendale organized the movement of 30 cartloads of furniture for them. In the same year, the famous writer Dr. Johnson wrote that Garrick now lives as a prince rather than an actor.
So here we see that the sound you heard was the floor creaking. So I'm walking around a bit. We see some of the Garrick's beautiful furniture here. I can't even imagine being surrounded on a daily basis by furniture this beautiful. Mrs. Garrick, would you like to take a seat in your chair? someone else walking around behind me. I don't have my K2 with me, but I, I watched a video where someone put a K2 on a chair and it started going up. Oh, really? Yeah, and the, the deal is that you can see the, the brocade kind of squish down like someone's sitting on it. Oh, right. okay. So, I have invited Mrs. Garrick to take a seat. She hasn't yet taken me up on it. But I've seen pictures of it like this, and then I've seen oh, right. pictures of the same chair with nobody in it. But it's okay. the, the the flower is kind of folded as though okay. someone's sitting on it. I know it's such a little thing for you, Mrs. Garrick, but it was <laughs> surprisingly enough, it would be a very huge thing for me. I'll step back just a bit to give you some room. If you would take a seat on your favorite chair, it would mean the world to me to see that. I see your favorite chair here. Would you share with me what your favorite dish was to eat? Perhaps your favorite dessert? Someone else walking through the galleries. Mr. Garrick must have enjoyed some very fine meals in your day. Can you tell me about some of them, please? I've been told this was your favorite chair. Is it because it was comfortable it was be or was it because of the color? Is green your favorite color? Well, Mrs. Garrick, I'm afraid we have to leave, but it was wonderful to visit with you. Thank you so much for visiting with me, and I really hope that you have made some conversation with me, and 
that I will hear it when I listen to our conversation later. So we are going to be leaving very, very soon. If you want to make a visitor from America very happy, <laughs> I know we're in rebellion against you right now, and, and it's a little ticklish, but I have no wish to be contrary. I would just very much like it if I could see you take a seat in your chair. suppose you know that your wonderful furniture is on display in a museum for people to look at and enjoy. But the museum is going to be closing very, very soon. And we are going to have to leave you. taking our leave now. Thank you very much for visiting with me, and thank you for letting me admire your lovely chair. Have a lovely day. The most famous haunted artifact at the Victoria and Albert Museum is also in the British galleries in room 57. This is the Great Bed of Ware, and it lives up to its name. It's huge, about 10 feet from head to foot and from side to side. It was built, well, there are two different versions of that story. Some people point to the 1463 painted on the headboard and say that it was made by Jonas Fosbrook, a German craftsman, and presented by him to King Edward IV. Other folks, perhaps a bit cynically, say that the bed was built in 1590 as a publicity stunt for the White Hart Inn. After all, anyone could paint any date they wanted to on the headboard. Regardless of when the bed was made, it's a real work of art. The bedspread is an eye-catching red with gold embroidery. It's a canopy bed, and the underside of the canopy is covered with beautiful woodwork. The oak frame is also covered with gorgeous, intricate carvings and not-so-intricate gouges of people's initials. The bed was so famous that folks who slept in it would commemorate the occasion by, yes, graffitiing their initials into the polished wood. This is why we can't have nice things. How famous was it, you ask? Well, the bed got shuffled around between five inns and in where over the centuries. The White Hart, the George, the Crown, the Bull, and the Saracen's Head. It was famous enough to catch Shakespeare's attention. The Bard mentions it in Twelfth Night, when Sir Toby Belch describes a sheet of paper as big enough for the bed of Ware. It also found its way into other plays. Ben Johnson's The Silent Woman, 1609, and George Farquhar's The Recruiting Officer, 1706. The bed also showed up in a newspaper article of July 1765 that said that the bed had been used in 1689 for a stunt on the night of King William III's coronation in which 26 butchers and their wives agreed to spend the night in it. Sure, it's big, but fitting 52 people in it is stretching things a bit. And spending the night in it was, apparently, not a thing to be approached lightly. It's said to be haunted by the ghost of the carpenter who built it. The spirit is said to be highly irritated by the many, many, many people who have defaced his craftsmanship over the centuries by crassly carving their initials into it. There are two different theories as to what will piss the ghost off. 
One is that he doesn't like people having sex in the bed. The other is that he gets twitchy when non-royal people sleep in it. Whatever the reason, when folks try to get frisky in the bed, the ghost will scratch and pinch them until they give up and settle down. Other stories say that to sleep in the bed at all runs the risk of being pummeled by the angry ghost. Harrison Saxby, master of the horse to King Henry VIII, slept in the bed alone one night to impress a girl. Okay, that's not the whole story. The tale goes that Harrison fell in love with the daughter of a wealthy miller who lived at Chalk Island, near where. Trouble was, loads of other men were in love with her, too. King Henry, so the story goes, was passing through where on his way to Hertford Castle and decided to settle the matter. He had the girl and her many suitors brought before him and promised her to any man who could spend the night in the great bed. Our boy Harry was the only guy brave enough to even try it. He was found the next morning lying on the floor next to the bed, covered in bruises and utterly exhausted. But he got the girl. In 1870, the bed was bought by Henry Teal and moved to Rye House Hotel in Hoddesdon. And in 1931, it was purchased by the Victoria and Albert Museum for its collection. The museum shelled out £4,000 for it, the money coming from a grant from the art fund. The grant money came in handy, as this amount was about four times the furniture department's annual budget for acquisitions at the time. Nonetheless, the museum bought it and installed it in the British galleries. Hopefully the ghost of Jonas Fosbrook is appeased, as now no one, royalty, nobility, or commoner, can sleep in his bed. Or carve their initials into it. Honestly, you can't take some people anywhere. I felt bad racing through the museum, barreling past thousands of equally magnificent artifacts in search of the two I knew to be haunted. But it was worth it to bring you guys along for a look at these two famous haunted objects. For more information about haunted museums, please check out Gone on Vacation, Haunted Zoos, Museums, and Amusement Parks, available at bookshop.org and on Amazon. I've given you just a tiny taste of the stories between the covers of the book, so I hope you'll seek it out for more ghostly tales. In the next episode, we're going to continue with the theme of haunted museums and take a trip to Nottingham, England, stomping grounds of Robin Hood. Join me for a very special peek inside another haunted museum the next time we go Lights Out.